First question is from Kai Lovecraft. What do you think about plyometrics? How can I incorporate plyometrics and functional training into my routine? This is right after uh, geometry and algebra. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> I know, it sounds I was, also like a I was, supplement. I was, I was terrible at this. I'm yes. taking a lot of plyometrics. Yeah, absolutely terrible. Big. Yeah, no. You know what's funny? My my mind has has changed a little bit on this uh, relatively recently. Uh, talking to our good friend uh, Joe DeFranco, mm -hmm. and of course, like anything, right? And this makes perfect sense. Like anything, there's varying degrees of how you can apply it and how hard you do it, right? So, like if someone says, "What do you think about heavy lifting?" Well, heavy lifting is all relative. It depends on the person who's doing it and what the context is. And what might be heavy for my grandmother is obviously going to be very light for me. Uh, but challenging the body that way, there's going to be benefits. Same thing with plyometrics. And what he said to me was which rang totally true, is if you stop training a particular skill, you'll eventually lose that skill. Now, I've experienced that myself. Yeah. You don't use it, you lose it. I have. I've experienced it myself where I go to the park and you know, I'm playing frisbee with my kid and I go to jump and twist and mm -hmm. I feel like it's not, I'm not moving like I think I could. And it's because I haven't trained jumping or twisting or those type of explosive movements. So plyometrics, from a health standpoint, training them appropriately and properly is to be able to maintain that kind of movement. If you want to be able to, you know, if you if you miss a step and catch yourself, or if you want to jump off the curb or jump down uh, off of the you know the, the the back of your truck, or you want to you know reach up and grab something real quick because someone throws something at you or whatever, plyometrics helps you maintain that ability. Now, from a advanced point of view, uh, plyometrics improves explosive power. And plyometrics activate fast twitch muscle fibers better than almost any other form of training. Now, why is that why is that important? Well, fast twitch muscle fibers are the muscle fibers that grow and build. And so if you're just interested in overall fitness and want to build muscle, so long as it's done appropriately, plyometrics will 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 send a, a very loud and different signal to the muscles to build and grow. Well, it's also about maintaining abilities. Like and, and I know that uh, not everybody wants to be an athlete. Not everybody wants to uh, be able to uh, move super explosively and sprint on command or slow down really e efficiently and effectively and change directions. But um, it, you can take elements of that to your average person and really benefit uh, their lifestyle uh, substantially. So like you give examples of when you're reaching back for a car really quickly to, you know, brace something or, uh, you know, somebody, something falls from a shelf and you have to react like super aggressively. And if you don't have, if your body doesn't recognize how to react in a situation like that, this is just one of those instances where you will uh, suffer the consequences of that. The, the body's going to have to adjust and react how it's going to adjust. And a lot of times it, it, it will get injured as a result because you're, you're neglecting this side of training, which is definitely a component. The other thing to plyometrics uh, to, to consider, I mean, this is, this is one of those where it's, it's at the pinnacle of your training in terms of like what attributes you're trying to, uh, achieve. And so I look at it as, you know, this is sort of like a testing grounds. Like, even if it's just like your average person that's been training their way up, uh, the rungs to get to a certain point where now if you move explosively, you have to have put in all that groundwork to be able to stabilize and, and get your body under control as quickly as you're able to uh, explosively move into that position. So it's, it's a good test uh, as well. I've always thought that plyometrics belong in programming. I just think that they've been poorly done. That's all. Yeah, no one does them right. Yeah, sure. I, I definitely think they belong in. I think they belong in somewhat in everybody's routine. Uh, and when you don't, I mean, I, I experienced. Uh, I think I've shared on this podcast at least once or twice the story of me jumping out of the back of my my bed of my truck. Uh, that that was the first kind of rude awakening for myself. That oh wow, I've really neglected this type of training. I did a lot of it in my twenties. Uh, and even like into uh, my early 30s, right before competing, competing really, I became so focused on aesthetics that I completely eliminated plyometrics in my training. It wasn't a goal. It wasn't a, a focus of mine. And I really didn't see uh, the consequences of that until that day. Like it hadn't registered. I hadn't had a, t a moment or a time. I wasn't playing basketball at the time. Uh, I hadn't done anything explosively. That was the first time I had called on my body to do something that I believed I could easily do. And I jumped down from the truck, and I was I was fine, but boy, it, it felt like somebody took a baseball bat to my knees, uh, and I was like, whoa. 
And I was like, well, this is what I get. When was the last time, you know, Adam, you did a, you know, you know, jump off of a box or jump up to a box. And when I thought about it, I was like, man, it's been five, six years since I've done something like that. And that inspired me to get back into incorporating it into my training. Now, it doesn't mean that you like my training also turns into this, you know, explosive plyometric circuit based lifting routine all the time it just means like, hey, I need to have some jump boxes in there or where you step down from a jump box and and work on the deceleration of the of the squat or the jump or some sort of explosive lateral movements with the tube or something like that, because you don't want, like Justin alluded to, you don't want to lose it. If you don't want to lose those abilities on things that you may do in real life, then yeah, then it belongs in the program. It, I just, we need to talk about how it's poorly programmed. And the way it's poorly programmed most commonly is people do it to fatigue. And that's not the idea. The idea is that you want to be able to be, be comfortable. Justin gave the analogy of reaching back to the car real quick or something falling off a shelf and then being able to react. So when you do that, you don't do that 15 repetitions or 30 repetitions. Like you do that one time, you know, it like happens and then you, you have to be able to do it. So that's how you should emulate it in your training. One to three reps. And there should be plenty of rest in between. And it's all about the movement of it. And then there's prerequisites before you do that. If you can't step up onto a box with beautiful form, you shouldn't jump up onto a box. That should be the first and foremost. You should be able to step up onto a box with good technique, good stability, good form, good control. And then the progression of that is the, the ability to be able to jump up onto the box with good form. And then when you finally get to that place where you're jumping up on the box, you don't need to be doing 10 to 15 reps in a circuit-based type of routine or with low rest periods, you do three to five jump boxes and you rest in between every rep and you and you be very meticulous about how you move and you and, and how you land and how you take off. And that's where the emphasis is put when you put it into your program. So yes, I, I, I think uh, plyometrics, fi functional training uh, belongs in everybody's routine, no matter the age. But the way you apply it into there really depends on their level. Have they done the prerequisites to get to that point? And then to make sure if you're somebody who is not an athlete and it's not a high priority that you just intermittently introduce it into your routine enough that you don't lose it. Like that's uh, the two common mistakes that I see when you see people talking about or utilizing plyometrics.